Okay, so, guys, can I rope you back in for a moment? Yes. Thank you. Um, so we set up a render. I let it run for a few minutes to a point where I think it actually has some pretty good uh, resolution to it, right? So here, I just want to um, really quickly highlight the, the difference in these materials. So now that it's a higher resolution, you can really see it a little bit better. Um, the, the brushed metal kind of creates that like knurled, almost cable looking um, sort of effect to it, which breeds that degree of, of, of materiality into it without distracting with, you know, these, these funny little graphics. So I think that that um, differentiates it from the framing material in a, in a really positive way. So anyway, um, that's, that's what we're using here for those. Um, let's, uh, my fabric doesn't seem to have done much, but that's okay. Um, so let's uh, go through the exporting process. So we are working with alpha channels in this. Um, once the render is done, you can't save your file until the render is done and you stop it. You know that already. Um, but when you click on saving the image, there's a feature we haven't used yet. Um, in the bottom, it says embed channels and lights. You, if, if you click on save all channels, oh, it's a little hard to see up here. Hang on. Uh, if you click on save all channels, uh, that will allow you to save all channels and it, it, it defaults to saving them as separate files. If you click on embed channels, if the format uh, supports it, whether or not you've exported those channels as like a TIFF file um, or a PSD file, which PSD it should, um, then it'll kind of just embed all of these channels directly into the file. So when you open it later uh, in Photoshop, for instance, then it'll already be there. But I'm going to show you the process if you're doing it manually, especially because this is such a simple exercise. So um, then you need to make sure that you're locating it. So I'm going to go to my uh, desktop again. I'll just use that as a default. Um, so let's call this one um, Axon Alpha, I guess, something like that. Uh, whether or not you care about 8-bit or 16-bit doesn't matter. It's it's really just kind of like a color control thing, not a resolution quality um, feature. So we won't need it in this course in this course, but you may need it in the future. Um, but it's there. So you save that file, and when you go to your folder, desktop, where's my dump? There it is. Okay. So what you're going to get is. Um, an axon alpha that looks like this, and you're going to get uh, the other image, uh, or sorry, the, the actual render that looks like that, and then you're going to get the other image, which is all black and white. So if I just double clicked it, it'll open it up and it's going to look like this. Um, so that's your positive negative. You can use that as a clipping view, um, and I'm going to show you the absolute easiest possible way that you can use positive negatives with your alpha channel in order to mask out elements in your render. So when you go to Photoshop, and this one is absolutely critical. So this is one of like the maybe five lessons where if you leave this class and you don't remember it, you've done yourself a disservice. Okay, so pay very close attention, all of you, including Bador. Yes. Thank you. Um, so, so what we're going to do is use a layer mask to very, very easily just clip out everything that's not shown um, in white in the alpha mask. Um, so we need to create, well first unlock that layer. We're going to create a layer mask and you can do that using this little, if you look in the bottom right it just says add layer mask. It's the rectangle with the cutout in the middle. Um, just click that and it's going to open up a layer mask on this layer. If you've not worked with that before you can use that to erase things. So if I switched to say um, a paintbrush and I made it a black paintbrush I could erase with that, right? Um, and that's that's a black paintbrush that is being used to erase. Um, so the way that that works with the alpha mask is when you copy, oops, when you copy the whole thing, go to copy, layer mask, um, go back into your alpha mask, and if you try to paste it, I forgot about this, sorry. Um, if you try to paste it without activating that layer mask, um, It'll just paste it as another layer. So that would be really frustrating. What you have to do is actually alt click the layer mask, and that will bring that layer mask up so you can paint on it like it's another image. Um, so then hit paste, and then go back to your base image, and it'll cut it all out. 
So it's a pretty nifty way, a nifty tool, I think, of using the environment settings of your render uh, to really, I guess, you know, get that extra degree of realism and believability into an otherwise analytical render. Um, so let's pull this down. I'm just going to fill in the background with some white. And there you go. That's what it's going to look like on the page. What questions do you have? Okay, cool. Huh? Oh, yeah, the Kush ball. Yeah, I got to get one of those. I have candy today, though. I could use that to coax some questions out of you. I only have like five pieces, though, so I got I to gotta choose when I ask my questions wisely. Um, okay. So um, we're going to do an illustrator portion of this, but it's approaching around 8 o'clock. And before you guys get all wiped out at like 9 o'clock, I want to make sure I'm doing my desk crits with you. So um, I'm going to break. We're going to do like an hour to an hour and a half of like desk crits, and then I'll show you the illustrator portion. It's super simple. You don't have to worry about it. So um, yeah, cool. No other questions then? All right, let's take a 10-minute break, and then we'll go into um, desk crits. <laughs>